Thanks. There you go. All right, welcome everybody. Um, as um, as Yvonne mentioned, the class is recorded tonight, and so um, if you're interested in watching the replay, which I recommend doing um, for the projects, the replay will be on michaels.com slash classes. And you just scroll down and find the uh, circle link for our jewelry classes. And it'll make it easier to find um, this recording. It's in order most recent. So it should be up within 48 hours um, to watch. OK, and so um, I wanted to just say a few things about the project before getting started. Um, this is one of those ones that could be considered somewhat intermediate. I think it's completely approachable for beginners to try this project as well. Um, but my recommendation was with all of these classes, because we're trying to put so much information out there in just one hour, that it sometimes helps just to watch the demonstration. And then um, there's a really great handout that is downloadable from the website. And you can review the steps there. And then, you know, when the replay's out, you can pause and work along with that. But what I'm going to try to do for today's class is I'm going to try to cover um, all three designs. This is the first one I'm holding up. Um, and I'm going to go slowly and I'm going to try to repeat what I can. But I want to make sure there's time to cover everything and show you guys all the, um, you know, the ideas. And my goal for this class and, and all the classes really is to um, just throw a spark out there. And so you'll see, oh, that's really great. I like that, that technique. I'm going to try that with my own idea. And you'll find lots of new ideas will come up just while you're working. And so the one I just pulled up was size eight seed beads on the ball chain. And then I was kind of playing with, you know, the seed bead wall, or sorry, the, the strong bead wall at Michael's. And I found these two hole tiles. And those were, this was a really easy design. This is a fast design. You can make this in 15 minutes and it's just uh, brick stitched onto the ball chain directly. Um, and then I got creative. And I wanted to make something with uh, an elegance and the ball chain gives it kind of a little bit of casual element to a really elegant piece. And so for this one, we're going to play with super duos, size 10 seed beads, and there's a check glass drop here. But I'm going to show you guys um, when we get to that spot, how you could replace that with a charm or an eight millimeter bead, like a gemstone bead. I just posted on my page today the one I finished. Um, right before class to get warmed up has an eight millimeter polymer clay bead. And we're gonna share the link for that uh, when I get to it. So um, without further ado, let me switch my camera and give you guys a close up view of each of the projects. There's project one, which is just size eight seed beads. And this one's project two. And that's with the two whole tiles. And then here's the super duo with the drop. And I want to show you guys one more. This one I just made. <laughs> I really just made it an hour ago. And I was having a lot of fun with it. It's the same design as this one here on the on my right. So I think that's still your guys' right. But this one made with an eight millimeter bead instead, instead of the drop. So it's totally your preference, um, what you'd like to do with your design, but Hopefully after today, um, you'll you'll be rolling with brick stitch on different types of chain, and um, and uh, you'll have some new ideas from today. So I'm starting with ball chain, and what this is is it's just the you know the regular size ball chain you see out there, and they come in se sets of three. So you'll get a gold one and two silver ones. But if you wanted to use leather, snake chain, um, it will also work. This doesn't have to be on ball chain. I just like the look, so that's why I went with ball chain. Um, the stitch is going to be made with a 0 0.006 wildfire. And I'm using the color black and the beads. So starting with design one, I'm going to work with some bright colors so that you guys can see the layers. These are size eight seed beads. And when I get to the next design, I'm going to see if I can get that focus going here. Um, let's see, is that, that looks like a little better. Okay. 
And when I get to the next designs, I'll show you guys the next um, seed bead lineup for those. But I'm gonna go ahead and get started with this one. So in the handout, it'll say 40 inches of thread for this design. And if you're making the full, the full span, let me show this again, you'll wanna have about that much because the way it's constructed is you're gonna go through it four times. And so you will need most of those 40 inches of thread. I'm gonna make a mini version of this now, just for time. And it's gonna be about that big. So you can see all the steps and for how to tie it off and everything. So, um, oh, and one more thing I wanted to say about measuring. So the first thing I'm gonna show you when I get started is tying the thread onto the ball chain. Well, where do I tie it? You'll need to identify your center point. And so that's what I've done here. And then each of the designs in the handout will tell you from where on the center point to move up and tie off one. Um, for my design today, I'm only gonna go up about three quarters of an inch because I wanna be able to work it quickly. But on the example design, it was, it was bigger. It was saying to use um, 4.5 inches. So this is a pretty good one. Um, but um, don't get too worried about whether or not you've found the exact center point and you're starting at the exact spot on the ball chain. And, um, I want to show you why. So when I made this one, I wasn't sure how long this section was going to be. And so it's not perfectly centered. See, I've got this over. No one's ever going to notice that. Don't worry about it. You know, get it kind of generally in the center, stitch, and, and um, it'll look great. So what I'm going to do right now. I'm just kind of going to guesstimate what about a, you know, almost just a, under hair under two inches would look like from a center point here. Get the keyboard out of the way there. And so I'm using precision scissors just to cut thread. And on this design, I'm using size 10 beading needles. You can also use 12. When we get to the super duos, it can be helpful to use the 12s, but I'm using size 10 right now for this design. And a trick to threading it is to take a, a pair of chain those pliers and flatten the end of your thread to get it through. Pull it down you know, about seven inches or so. This is worked on a single strand. So there are my needles threaded. I found my center point here. I'll bring that into the camera. Okay, here's my center point. And I'm going to attach my thread at about, about here, I think. Okay, so I'm going to tie a double knot. one and two and I'm going to start with this is an opaque turquoise size 8 cb and so everyone's got a different style for brick stitch um, I have a method that I like to use and I just pick up one bead to start and then I like to bring the tail thread through that bead. And then pull the thread, uh, the working thread and the tail thread apart. And so whatever's left remnant of that knot will go inside the bead. On this chain, it does tend to stay on the actual ball chain unless you do that step. And then when you do that step, it brings the knot off of the bar in between the two ball parts of the ball chain, and it brings it up into the bead. So that's it's a handy step. I, I recommend adding, you know, to your toolkit. And now I'm just identifying again which side is the one I came up high on. So that's going to be this side. Okay. So I've got the one bead on. I'm going to pick up another bead. Go under the ball chain. 
And if it helps, you can just kind of hold the thread with your finger or thumb. And I'm going under the ball chain. And now I'm going to bring the thread over the ball chain and through the bead. So needling through. And I'm going in the direction that the opposite direction that we just went through that bead. So down. And another trick to look at with the first few beads when you're adding them, getting them to sit next to each other. This is where the ball chains come through. Um, I'm going to make sure this loop is positioned in the next gap on the chain. There you go. I'm just locked right in position there. So that's step one. I'm going to build a few more. I'm adding some. And another idea is to place the needle kind of over that next gap. That also helps too. There's three one. When I start working quickly with ball chain, sometimes I'll pick up a piece like this and hold it between my thumb and forefinger and I'm pointer finger and put the needle underneath. See that spot? I'm just kind of pinching it to make it stay. This is how you can work fast, kind of working at speed there. If you hold it, it doesn't help if you're teaching for people to see what you're doing, but that's, um, I wanted to share the placement there. so. It, can help you if you're working at home. And so looking this one so you guys can see it. Okay, and then come along the front. So I went behind the ball chain with my needle. Now I'm coming over the ball chain and back up through the bead. So this basic concept here of just stitching on this like it was a component, the whole the whole um, starting point for all of these designs is you'll you'll start with this you know size eight one you'll think well wow what if I try with size sixty beads that would work or try some tens or try some um, you know some check glass rounds rondelles anything will work anything that you'd like to try and for spacing the beads will the beads will sit next to each other so when you're brick stitching. No matter what size bead you're using, when you add it, they will sit next to each other. And if you're working with ball chain and you have something that's too wide, just space it to the next one. It'll work great. Let me get a few more on here so I can show you the next step. And in the pattern, I think there's about 21 of these, I would put 21 pairs. Um, so in uh, the next step we're gonna do after this is we're gonna add a herringbone stitch layer. And in herringbone stitch, you need an even number, an even number of beads. So that's what I'm doing here, I'm adding even numbers. And you'd call each pair a column. And the design, um, design one in our handout has 21 columns. So here I've got one, two, three, that's four columns. I'll probably go for five columns. So that means I need to put two more beads on. Okay, last one. Okay, so that is step one. And I'm gonna switch colors now. In the handout project, this next row is repeated with the same color. For this one, I'm gonna switch just so we can tell our rows apart. And 
And so the next step here is to pick up two size eight seed beads and go down through that second bead. And so um, a lot of you will recognize this as um, herringbone stitch and that's exactly what I'm doing. And then come up through the next size eight bead. So I'm in this direction. I really love red with turquoise. The color is so pretty. Oh, and this color, I should tell you what this is. This is, it's a cinnabar red. It really does look like cinnabar color. And so I picked up two and I'm coming down through the next, the next size eight bead here. Oops, I caught a strand over here. One second, I'm gonna get untangled. Oh no. <laughs> There we go. Okay. And then come up through the next bead. See how easy this is? It's really, really easy. It's just two basic, you know, beading techniques. And they're both ones that we've done on other classes. So it's just how versatile all these all these stitches really are. It's really fun to see what other designers come up with. Okay, so there's one more. And I wanted to show you guys one more thing. Oh, I went through the wrong one. Sorry about that. I was supposed to go through the speed, but I went through. Oops. Okay. The last bead. There we go. Okay, so when you come down through the last bead, you're going to need to turn around to go the other direction. So to do that, just use the ball chain again. Just circle around it. I'm actually putting my needle behind it right now. And then coming up through both beads. And just ignoring that tail thread for the moment. This is the tail, tail thread here. Okay, I'm gonna switch colors again. And so row three, it's the same way, but with row three, um, you'll start to notice the curve forming. So with every stitch you add in herringbone, you end up with this kind of fanning um, thing that happens. And you'll notice it a lot more on a piece that's wider. The piece that I'm working right now is small, just so I can show you guys every, every layer. But on this one, that curve starts to form at this step. When you're adding row three, the curve will become really pronounced. And it holds its own shape like that. But even on a piece this small, you'll start to see it. So I'm coming down through the next bead. And with herringbone, I like to help the, the help them sit side by side. I think it it makes the um, tension good. Because when they're stacked, you're using more thread in between each bead versus if uh, if they're side by side like that. And so coming up through that red bead, that's my row two bead. Picking up two of my size eights, coming down to the next one. I'm gonna help that one sit side by side. And coming up through that last column here. Okay. And so um, to turn around here, again, we're gonna need somewhere to turn around. You can come down through this blue bead, which is your row one bead, go around the ball chain and come back up. And that might be what I'll do here. But another trick you could do is you can use, you can use the thread bridge that's in between both of those two blue beads 
as a way to turn. To do that, you just go through it. And then come back up through the red bead and the yellow bead. So what I did is I used the thread bridge between these two as a way to hook and turn. But you could also just go down through all these, go around the ball chain and come back up. Whichever, whichever way works for you is great. Okay, so the last row, and I'm adding that. We've done three rows so far. And so I'm gonna add another row on top of it. And this time I'm gonna do something different with where I stitch down. So normally in herringbone stitch, the next row, you do what we've been doing. You'd go down through this bead, the yellow one, and then come up through the next yellow. But on this piece that curves like this, you really want it to fan. And if you had a connection between these two beads, it wouldn't fan as much. So we're going to go down into the next, the next row and then turn so that you get that fan. And so to do that, just pick up two new beads, still size eight, and go through the yellow and the red beads. So through the last two rows, pull tight and make those sit. And then turn and come up through the ones, the two eights that are next to it. Yeah, I just keep going with the next one. Again, going through both of those. Up through the next two. And now this little, this little piece here is also, it's starting to do that fan. especially if you pull tight, it's automatically just moving those apart like that. Going down through the next two. And the last one. Okay, and so for this last step, I went through all the beads, all three of those. And I'm gonna loop around the ball chain again. And this is the last row, so it's just weaving in now. So to weave in, I'm gonna turn the piece over. I went behind the ball chain. I'm gonna come back up through. And I just went through the red, so row two. And just weaving in now, to weave in, all you gotta do is follow the thread path through a few beads, um, just like you were stitching it, just like you stitched it in the beginning. Um, and that is usually enough to lock the thread. And I'm just gonna show that really quick with the working thread and you would need to do the same thing with the tail thread that's left here. You see, I'm just weaving back through and give my thread somewhere to change direction by going down here. And I'm going to go through through this bead. Down. Go behind the ball chain and come up through however many beads I can get through. So it looks like I'm going to get through those three. And so weaving in, you can go anywhere you'd like. Just um, I use that loop around the ball chain there to be my change of direction, which makes thread you know, sit, uh, stay put when you trim it. So I'm gonna trim this one here by pushing down with the scissors, pulling up with the thread. Oops, sorry about that. A little overzealous of pulling on the thread. Okay, just putting tension on it so that the thread can disappear into the work. So I would repeat that. I would put a, put a needle on, on this tail, weave it in the same way, maybe going down around the ball chain at a different beating point. But there it is. That's an abbreviated version of this big one. 
And that is all there is to it. And so now you guys are thinking, well, what about other beads? And that's the first thing that happened to me when I was making these at home with the class. And I was, I was just going to stop there, you know, with, I was just going to stop with this because how gorgeous is that? And that would be a great class. But then I got distracted by more beads than known to happen. And, um, uh, and I saw these on the strong bead wall and the, uh, the part numbers for all of these beads, they're in the handout. So you'll be able to find them. And I thought, what if, well, what if we put these on all chain? So here's a, this is left over from my other strand. It actually comes with two strands on it. So these are my, my leftovers that I'm grabbing. Um, I'm going to get some more ball chain. And so with these, I found that a row of a row of size tens and a row of elevens made them pop the most. So what I'm going to bring in first is I'm going to bring in some size 10. Let's see, where are my tens? I'm going to bring in some size 10 yellows. Here's my ball chain. It's stuck on this card here, so I guess. Okay. You get three of them, which is really great. So you can make each design. And so for this one, you'll want to cut about 36 inches of thread if you're making the full length version. And the full length version, I think I used 10 tiles, was it? One, two, three, four, nine tiles. For the full length version, I had nine tiles. I'm going to do a version with um, five right now so we can get through without you guys having to watch me stitch through a bunch of them. And the same thing as before, you just want to kind of identify your midpoint. And if you don't know the, you know, in the handout, I have outlined how many inches it is from the center point for each of the designs that are featured. But let's say you didn't know that information and you were just designing your own. Here's how I did it. I just started playing and um, it doesn't need to be exact. But I'm going to just choose that spot based on that layout. OK, so I tied one knot. Now I'm going to tie a double knot. And the knot is sitting just in between two of the balls on the ball chain. And pull it up. And so the first bead you'll add for this is the actual tile. And I don't think they have a front or a back, so it doesn't really matter which hole. Just go through whichever one. And I'm still doing my same trick where I try to bring the tail thread up through the first bead. So that's what I've done here. I'm just going to pull them apart. Okay, and so there's another hole in this tile bead. I need to go down through that hole under the ball chain. I'm going under the ball chain here. And I'm going to use my finger just to hold it on the bead mat so it stays put. Now turn and come over the ball chain and through that same hole of the tile bead. And then tighten it down. So there's tile one. And the next step is to pick up another bead. But before, before you pick up the next tile, you'll need to pick up three size 10 seed beads. So three tens. 
and the re the way I discovered this and the way I, when I was working it was because they fan apart. The way to create that space for them to do that on a curve is to add those size 10 seed beads. And then come up through the same, I went behind the ball chain, sorry, behind the ball chain there. And then come up through the same hole. Don't go through this, the seed beads, just go through the tile. And then you'll want to guide the thread to sit in the next gap. And so it auto automatically does that little fan. And same as before, we're going to go down through the next hole of the tile, go behind the ball chain. And then come around it and above it and through the tile bead. There you go. It's thinking about it. There you go. And that one just automatically locked into the next section for me without me really having to guide it. It'll start to do that for you too, when, especially when you start adding the next one and the next one. So I did the same thing again. I picked up three size tens and I went through one side of the tile bead. I'm gonna go behind the ball chain here. And on around in the front of the ball chain and through the bead again, just like before. And guiding that one. There you go. I love this yellow with the turquoise too. Yellow, red, all those colors. We discovered they, they worked really nicely for the camera. And then I discovered I really liked them. Yeah, it's just really pretty. And so again, I'm doing the same thing. I picked up three tens and a tile bead. And I'm going to go behind the ball chain, or sorry, under the ball chain with the needle. And then pull up. I'm going around the top of the ball chain through the tile bead only. And then just double checking where that loop is going to sit when I pull tight. And then next gap. There it is. So now I'm just going down through the tile behind the ball chain. And then coming up around the front of the ball chain through the tile. Let me see where this one, yeah, that one's going to sit right where I want it to. Perfect. Okay. I'm going to add one more. Let's move a little faster on this one. Three tens, tile. Around the ball chain, through the tile. And one more, just to lock it down. Going through that last hole, behind the ball chain, pull tight, over the ball chain and through the tile. Okay, and there we go. So now I wanna do one more step and that is to embellish it. Let me show you on the example. It'll be a little harder to see on, on this sample, but so my tens were this gorgeous iris brown, but then in between each of those tens is an 11, a little 11 kind of highlighting the pico to make them really pop. You could stop here if you like that, just like it is, because that looks very cool. But I'm gonna go ahead and show you how I made this one with the color you can see better. This one has a crystal, like a transparent crystal in there. I'm gonna switch to red. And I'm using an 11, a size 11 in cinnabar red. You don't need that many, just a few. 
And so now I need to get to where I'm headed through these beads. So to do that, I'm going to make a turn. I'm going down through the second hole of the tile. And I'm going to go around the ball chain again. I'm going to try to hook the same spot as the thread that's there. And I am flipping it over just so I can see where I'm going through this tile. Okay. And so now go through one of those tens, just one of them. And look what happens when you put an 11 on the needle and then go through one more 10. I thought it was neat. It highlights that little pico. A pico is what these three beads together are called in bead weaving. And I'm going through the last size 10 with a new 11 on the needle. I, don't know, I just thought that was, it added some visual interest to the piece. And it's a way to bring in another color. So if you like it, go for it. And if not, this looks great too. And so if you'll need to get to, um, once you've gone through that last 10, you'll need to get over here to this 10. And so to do that, same as we did before, we're gonna need to weave through. So I went down through the tile bead, around the ball chain, and then back up through the tile bead. Just through the tile, not through the seed beads. Pull tight. And then we're gonna need to make one more turn. So going down through the tile, around the ball chain, and then back up through that same hole. And now I'm in position to add my 11s in between these. Okay, and I'll, I'll go through this one and then I'm gonna set this one aside and start the next one. Cause I think, I'm hoping this one was, you know, this was one of the easiest ones I think. And we're, we got about 20 minutes or so left of class. But what I would do here is I would, I would go down through, through this tile, come around, go down through this hole, come up, same thing, add the 11s, move down, over, down. And that's just to get your thread in the right position. So I'll finish this one a little bit later, but I know everyone was eager to see this one. I wanna make sure I leave time for that. So starting with a new set of ball chain, And then you're going to need some super dual beads um, and you'll need some size 10 seed beads to start. So I'm going to move these 11s out of the way. I'll stick with the yellow. And here's some super duos. And so for this design, it's um, 36 inches of thread for this one as well. Still using the wildfire. And I am going to use, you can use a 10 or a 12. It's preference. If you like using a 12, go for it. If you have 10s handy, use those. Super duos, I sometimes I find I'll use a 12, but if I don't have one, I'll make it work with a 10. And I threaded the needle, brought down about seven inches, folded it over. This is another single strand design. And then for this one, you are going to want to, you know, identify your center point like we did before without getting too worried about, you know, getting hung up on whether or not it's perfectly centered because it's, it's okay if it's off a little bit. But I'm looking at mine. I'm going to start it right there. The handout does have all the dimensions. You can measure from the center point up. In this case, it would be like 1.12 inches or so um, to get it perfectly centered. And the same as before, we're going to just tie a double knot with the end of the thread, leaving about, you know, seven to 10 inch tail for weaving in.
that was my first knot. I'm going to tie one more knot. Okay. And so I'm looking at the clock here. We got 20 minutes. I think I can do this. I made one in 15 minutes earlier. This last one. So I know we can. All right. I've picked up on the needle one super duo bead. And before I do that next step, I want to show you guys the same thing I usually, usually do with getting with the tail thread in the right spot first. It's easier to do when the bead is loose. So a good time to do that is now. This is my tail thread going through that same hole, using it to tighten. Okay, and so the next thing I want to do is turn and go through the next hole of the Super Duo. And pick up one size 10 bead and go behind the ball chain. And then turn and you want to come up through the size 10 bead and the Super Duo bead. And I went around the front of the ball chain there. So I was behind it, coming down, and in front of it, coming back up. And I'm going to tighten my tail thread to make sure the first bead is locked down. OK, so there's the first one. And so to add the next one, um, we're going to do kind of similar to what we did before with the tiles. We're going to pick up three beads. Those are our transition beads to the next bead. So a new Super Duo bead. And then you'll want to come down with one more bead on there. So the way this is built is I kind of tapered it. I'm going to show you on the example really quick. Um, and of course, the handout has this pattern outlined for you step by step. So you don't have to memorize this part. Um, it comes up. We just came up through one size 10 through the Super Duo. We picked up three. Here's the three size 10s coming down through the new Super Duo bead and picking up one more 10. And see how that's going to sit right next to this one. So here's how that looks. And now when you come up through the size 10 bead and the Super Duo bead, but don't come through the three tens, just through that first 10 and the Super Duo. And you'll have to help these first few beads sit in the right spot if you're using, you know, the ball chain as your guide. So they're there. Okay. And what I'm going to do next is come down through this Super Duo bead. And so the way this is set up is it starts to taper. So remember how we had one and one. Now I'm going to pick up two size 10 beads and go behind the ball chain. My tail thread got caught, sorry guys. And the same thing as before. So I went behind the ball chain. I'm going to go over the ball chain now and through both tens and the Super Duo bead. And again, I'm guiding it so that it sits in the right spot. And so how this pattern works is under each of the Super Duo beads, you've got one bead, then it goes up to two beads, then it tapers up to three, and then it goes back down so that you get this kind of little wave. And that was just style. It, you could just do one that's solid, the same height. Anything that you like the look of is, is great. I was just playing with, you know, giving something, uh, something of like a scallop to it. And that's why, that's why I added extra beads to make it grow like that, but you can do any design you like. 
from a course. So um, sharing how I did this one with the knowledge that you can do something totally different. It would be even better or great. Um, so, but this is the same step as before where we're transitioning to a new bead, picking up three tens, going down through a new super duo, and then I'm picking up two more size 10 beads, going under the ball chain and pull tight, and then come up through both of those tens and the super duo bead. And I usually get the thread to stop here. I get the thread to be about, you know, a small loop before I start guiding it. Um, to sit right next to the last one. So you see it's starting to take shape. It's starting to look like this other one. We go down through that super duo bead. I'm gonna pick up two more. No, three more, sorry. So we had two ones, two twos, and now it's time to add three. Going under the ball chain. Coming back up through all three of those tens and the super duo bead. Pulling tight till I have a small loop. and then guiding it to sit in the next spot. And then three tens, another super duo bead. And then we'll do three more size 10 beads. So that was the three tens, super duo and three more. Go behind the ball chain, pull tight and then come up through all of the beads. Okay, and so now I'm gonna check the pattern, but I think we have one more set of three to add. It's kind of handy, but there's two sets of two and then three sets of three. Going behind the ball chain. There we go. And so that's the whole step. That's the, um, the whole way to build the first row. And it's just a series of adding a new bead. And when you add a new bead, you pick up three to act as the, I guess, kind of like the space between them. And I've added three stacks of three. So now I'm gonna taper back down to two. This design tapers down in the center and then tapers back up on the other side. But that's all I'm doing is just changing up the number that sits um, between the ball chain and the super duo to give it that scallopy kind of wave look. And I'm hoping that makes sense. But um, it is in the handout. And the sketch, I feel like the sketch helps for me, the visual of seeing it illustrated the thread paths um, isolated. That helps me understand it. I think it will help you guys too. Okay, going behind the wall chain, I picked up two. These are my two sets of two. I went around the front of the ball chain. Here we go. Picking up three more size 10 beads, a new super duo. And then for this next one, I'm just gonna pick up one size 10. See, we tapered up to three and back to two, and now we're tapering right back down to one. Going through just that 10 and the super duo. I'm gonna tighten it down. Guide that loop so it sits in the next gap. And pull tight. Right there, right about there. Okay. And again, I'm turning. 
pick up one more. behind the ball chain. Around the front through the bead. Okay, so that's half done. Let me show you what I mean. That's the first half. We've tapered down to this spot where there's one one above these guys. So, so now I'm just going to very quickly build that other half. I'm repeating everything I just did in reverse in this direction. So there's the three to space to the next one. And now picking up two size tens going behind the ball chain. Around the front of the ball chain through both tens and through the super duo. Pull tight. And the same thing here, I'm going to need two more. Go through the super duo. Pick up these two. Behind the ball chain. And I'm going to go a little fast here because the um, class is getting down to, down to time. But, um, you know, actually what I'm thinking is, if you guys can visualize it, um, I might turn so I can show you adding the bead. Um, what, what I should do now is complete some more stacks. Should be mirroring these three, two, and two, so that I have a, a total. This is the center here. And so I should have a total of five going this way, but I'm going to make that turn prematurely and let's just work it this way so I can show you adding. Um, what you do, if, uh, let's pretend that this is the last bead over here. Turn around and come up. And we're going to add these little pico edges, kind of the same as we did with the tiles, same exact process. I'm going to need to turn. So I'm going down through that next hole, the super duo, and through the beads below it. It looks like my thread is on top of the ball chain here. So I'm going to come behind it and up through the beads. There we go. And now switch to an 11. Um, I'm still using the Cinnabar Red 11s. And, and sorry, go through that first 10. So you guys will recognize this is exactly how we did the, um, the space between the tiles. Picking up an 11, going through the next 10, pick up another 11, go through the next 10, and then go ahead and continue down through the super duo that's below it. So just right here. I just went through the super duo. And the cool thing here is we don't have to go around the ball chain anymore. We can use the super duo to turn. So see what I did there? I went under the super duo and then came up through that side. And I'm gonna do the same thing again. Pick up another, I went through the 10 and picking up 11. Oops, there we go. Pick up one more 11, go through the next 10. And here's where you add that focal. And I'm gonna show you two ways. Got six minutes, I'm watching. Okay, so we're here in the center. And I'm gonna show you the samples again, show you what I'm doing. Here's one where I've added a bead. And here's the one where I added a drop. So starting with the drop. The drops are these, um, they come in a strand like this. They're on the strong bead wall. You get a lot of them. So you can do some more projects with them too. You only need one for this. And what you'll do is just go through, if it will let you go through. Oh, there's a part of the strand in there. Sorry guys, let me go with the next one here. Okay. String it right onto your thread. 
and then go through the next 10. Let me get these out of the way really quick. And so then what you would do is the same, the same process that we did before. Pick up a 10, sorry, pick up an 11 and go through the next 10. So there's how to add the drop. I'm gonna back out and show you really quick how to add an eight millimeter bead. Just in case, you know, you want a different look or you don't have drops handy or you just have an eight millimeter bead that really inspires you that you wanna use. Here's how I did this other sample. So the beads that I'm using are, um, I found these on the, the bead wall. They're just so pretty. They're like a polymer clay color. On my sample, I chose the white one. I just thought that was really cool. So let me grab any bead here. Let's use the green this time. And these have very large holes. So what you want to do is give yourself a few beads and test it. I put two beads on, two size 11s in this case. Go through the bead and see where it sits. Pull it tight, push it up against there. And I'm thinking that's probably going to sink into the bead, which is what I wanted it to do. And if it doesn't, go back through and take one off. And I'm thinking I'm going to do that, actually. With my last sample, my first 11 sunk into the bead. And this one seems like it's going to actually be perfect, just like that. OK, yeah, there we go. So just play with it and see. Um, now I'm picking up three size 11 beads. Come up through the eight millimeter bead. And so there's an option here. If your bead is heavy, now my polymer clay bead is really light. So I could just go straight through my tens and start adding my next layer of embellishment here. Or if it's a heavy bead and I want to make it secure, I can use my super duo as a way to loop around. And I'll show you that really quick. Like if you wanted to put a gemstone bead here instead of a light, a light bead, you would want to do this step. So I've gone through the super duo and I'm going to turn and go through the other side. That's the other hole in super duo. Come down through it. And I'll go through that, you know, that uh, 11 we added on top of the bead. Go through it, come down to the bottom of the bead, and then loop around the little pico we created with three 11s at the bottom. Come back up through it, come back up through that 11 that's on the top of the bead. And now I'll continue on into the next slide here. Going through just that first 10. Pick up one 11. Go through the next 10. And do that one more time with another 11. Go to the next 10. Okay, and then I would do that same step we had before. Come down through the super duo. Use it to turn by going that way through it. And on to the next step for embellishing. And that is the super duper abbreviated version of how to make. That hey, Danielle, let's car me. Hey. hey. You're doing great for time. And in the history of beading classes, I've never seen anybody teach three designs in the same class <laughs> very, very quickly. Uh, some people have never seen ball chain. So would you mind showing them the component at the end that actually closes the ball chain and turns it into a necklace? Yeah, yeah. Let me switch back really quick. Um, and so it comes on it's on these little cards. I'm going to let my camera come back into focus there. Sorry, guys. Okay. Um, the end of the ball chain 
has one of these little, I don't really know what to call it. They kind of just look like a tube, but one side is open and you can get the ball chain out by pushing this way. It should snap right out. Andy for getting it off the card as well. That's what I was doing earlier when I was fussing with, I had a tight one, but then to lock them, and go. I put the, the ball of the ball chain through that open part of the tube and then just push it down. More like kind of turning it down. That's great. Thank you, Danielle. They understand now. Gotcha. Okay. Now, I think you have 30 seconds. Maybe you'd like to show the final class of the year. Yes. Yeah. Let me grab this. So more brick stitch next week, but with some, some new fun stuff, new, new fun spins on just all the possibilities of brick stitch. I really went through like a, my whole library of brick stitch knowledge for this one. So gonna have a lot of fun. That little end um, embellishment is a very handy trick for lots of different kinds of jewelry. So that's one you wanna definitely tune into. We're gonna do a little bit of wire work as well. See these little guys at the top. I made those with 22 gauge um, German style wire. All right, so we made it for right at one minute over. <laughs> so thank you guys so much for joining us. And um, I'd love to see you back next week on Tuesday. All right, have a good night, everybody. Bye.